So today we've got a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter from Red Odo. So this is really neat guys. We've got their batteries. They've got MPPT charge controller. Now they've got inverter, so they've pretty much got the total package. Let's open it up. We got our inverter cables, copper lugs. Okay, so they've joined four eight gauge wires. So there's four eight gauge wires crimped together. So there's some mounting hardware and a manual. So this is a 12 volt DC. It's recommended to mount it horizontal. And it's claiming to have an idle consumption of less than nine watts. We are going to check that. It has a peak surge of 4,000 watts. All right, and there's the inverter. Pretty clean, basic looking unit. I really like that actually. Has uh, two AC receptacles here. Has a on off button and a display. And on the other side, we've got our terminals. I do like how they have these covers. All right, I say let's crack this thing open and take a look on the inside before we do anything else. All right, I think we can open it now. There's the lid. Aluminum. All right, and there's the guts of the inverter. It does look pretty clean and tidy. Uh, I don't see anything that looks like a mess. Uh, looks like all the solder joints are nicely done. Uh, looks like 80 millimeter fans. Nice beefy heat sinks. Everything's tied on the terminal lugs. Now when you get inside the unit, they've basically got two 8 gauge wires for the positive and then two 8 gauge for the negative. So 8 gauge is capable of 50 amps each, so we're talking about 100 amps. Now this being a 2000 watt inverter, at 2000 watts we're going to be pushing 200 amps. So I'm curious of how well these cables here will handle 200 amps. Alright, well let's put this thing back together and do some tests. Alright, and we are going to connect this 2000 watt inverter to two of Verdodo's mini 100 amp hour batteries. And the reason why we're using two is because like I said, we need upwards around 200 amps to fully max this 2000 watt inverter out. And each one of these batteries will support doing 100 amps continuously. So we're gonna need two of them in parallel to get the 200 amps. And before I connect the last connection to the inverter, we're going to pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter and you do this to avoid a big spark and a huge inrush current into your inverter. Should be good enough. Okay, we got a tiny little spark, that's fine. And I do want to point out for you guys, if you don't already know this, whenever you're paralleling batteries together, notice how I've got the positive going to the inverter here, and I've got the negative going to the inverter diagonal. And the reason why you do this is that so it will draw current from these two batteries equally. If you had the negative and positive going to the inverter on the same battery, it actually would draw more current from this battery and less from this one. So you'd have an imbalance. Also keep in mind whenever you do this type of installation, it's a good idea to fuse this. It's actually fused on internally and there is some short circuit protection in these BMSs. But whenever you do an actual install, go ahead and fuse it. All right, so let's turn this thing on. There we go. Yeah, nice clear display. I uh, see what it's, it's cycling through the DC and AC voltages. So we got 110 volts AC and we've got 13.4 DC, zero watts. It has a battery level, but don't ever pay attention to those on these things because that's going by the voltage of the battery. And it's going to be wrong. All right, so the first thing, let's plug in, let's try the AC. Actually, before we do the AC, let's see what the idle current is. 
So it's doing 0.46 amps at idle. Let's measure the voltage so we can do our wattage calculation. 13.4, and it's actually showing 0 0.45 amps now. Wow, so it is less than nine watts idle consumption. We're measuring six watts for idle consumption. Impressive. Now let's plug in the AC. Let's turn this guy on. We'll start off on low, that's fine. I hear the compressor starting up. We are pulling 53 amps right now. Yeah, it's running that AC on low perfectly fine. We're doing, uh, looks like 30, 35, 36 amps. Let's turn this on higher. Why not, let's just go up high. Okay, so we're, we're a little over 60 amps. There's no fans on yet. And it's showing on the front panel that we're pulling 730 watts. Almost 900 watts now. So we're, we're doing 1,026 watts, and I just did a calculation on the watts going in, and we're doing 1,116. So that seems like we're close to like 90% efficient. That's really good, actually. Okay, let's double check to make sure. So we're showing 87.4 amps there, times 12.96. So we're showing uh, 1,132 watts going in. And this thing is showing 1,040 watts coming out. Something happened. It's, cry it's screaming over here. What's going on? Okay, the fans are coming on. I wonder what's going on here, guys. Our battery voltage is 12.9, so the battery's not low. Something weird's going on here. Yeah, I do not have a clue as to what's going on here. I took a picture with my tablet so I could see better on the screen we got 1172 watts 110 volts AC I think this is showing that we're at 60% uh, load or capacity of the inverter I'm not sure why it's making this chirping noise so let's turn the AC off okay now it sounds like it's going it's back to behaving again. Can this thing not keep up with just a little bit over a thousand watts? What's going on? Well, right before it started chirping on us, I was gonna do this calculation. I think we were doing a thousand forty at the time out, and then in on the DC where we were doing eleven thirty two. That put us at like ninety one percent or ninety one point eight percent efficient, <laughs> which is really good. That's all kind of moot at this moment because it went all chirpy on us. And that's not going to work for anybody. Let's turn this thing back on. Yeah, we were off to a great start and everything looked really fantastic except for the chirping. <laughs> okay, so I've got the AC running again. The fans are on on the inverter. Let's see if the chirp comes back. You know, we're right around the the 1040 watt mark and it seemed like when it got into the 1100 watts i think that's when the chirp started coming on all right we're back to chirping the crickets are back or look we're at 1135 watts so what's going on 
So I've got a heat gun. Let's hook that up too and see if we can just push this thing over the top. Oh, it doesn't like that at all. <laughs> I mean, it's still going, but it's sitting here screaming. Yeah, so I looked through the manual. Should be some icons on the screen. There's a high DC voltage, a low DC voltage, a high temperature. Uh, load is higher than rated on the inverter. I didn't see any of those icons. Actually, here's the picture of the display and there's none of those icons on here when it was making that noise. All right, guys, so let's just remove the AC out of the equation for now. And let's try to load it down with this heater and possibly add in the heat gun. And let's see what we get. See if we can reproduce the same problem or does it work? All right, so the heater's on. And the heater's on low, so we're only pulling, you know, 650 watts roughly. Let's go ahead and go high on the heater. Okay, so we're showing 1,250 watts. So it's actually above what we were getting on the AC when the unit starts to chirp. It seems like when it gets over 1100 watts on the AC. So we're above that and we don't have a chirp going on. So let's plug in the heat gun. We got 1726 watts and we don't have any problem. It seems to be working perfectly fine. I mean, honestly, it seemed to be working perfectly fine before. It just had that audible alert. So I don't understand what the deal is. What, you know, is there some kind of weird power factor problem or something like this? I've heard that there might be a bad power factor with these kinds of ACs. All right, now the fan is on and it's not super loud. That's nice. So I'm gonna just let that continue to run. All right, so I did let this run for a while with the heat gun and the heater on, and there was no problem. It ran just perfectly fine. So, so far the only problem we've had is running this 12,000 BTU inverter AC on max. I think actually if you just, if this ran at medium, it probably would never have an issue. So I'm not sure exactly what the deal is with this. It's there's something strange with the load that this place is on this that it's not incredibly happy with. So I want to try to run something else that I know that's a pretty high load. This leaf blower has a pretty high load, so let's try that. All right, so just slightly under a thousand watts. It did run it fine. I did hear the alarm kind of come on briefly as I started the motor up. That's probably not an issue, given that when you start this motor up, it has a, a huge inrush current. It probably exceeds well over 2,000 watts. Let's try the heat gun and the leaf blower. So the heat gun's on. I'm gonna pull in 450 watts. All right, yeah, so that worked fine. Yeah, so it seems to run everything perfectly fine, even you know heavy motor loads and everything. Uh, just a little weird on this AC unit. So as long as you're not trying to run a 12,000 BTU AC off this on max, this thing's probably fine. I'm actually curious if we run this on a lower setting and then run other loads on it, does it work? Let's try that. So let's plug in the AC. We've got the heat gun still running. Let's turn this on. Let's just do medium. All right, 
right, well, there's no problem right now. This is medium. You know, we're only doing slightly over a thousand watts. We've got the heat gun running, and it's it's not making that alarm sound. So I'm curious. Let's try the heater in place of the heat gun. Because that'll put more load. So we're at 1,230 watts. And it's fine. So if you remember, you know, if we went over, it seemed like we, if we went over 1,100 watts or maybe 1,200 watts, that's when this thing started making that noise while running the AC. But there's no problem right now. So I think for the most part, this thing is fine with the exception of that one quirkiness where we have this on max and we went over you know 1100 watts that's when it started doing that chirpiness okay now the fans on so it's cooling and the fans are actually really really not disturbing at all some fans have a little high pitch that just drives me crazy uh, these are mild all right guys, so I think that's gonna be the end of the video. Let me know what your thoughts are on this inverter in the comments. And if you like this content, please like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.